Okay. Carolyn, thank you so much for joining me on Bold Like Her. Thanks for having me. <laughs> Fun to start the day with you, Kim. Yeah. You know, I wanted to talk a little bit, first of all, about how we met. I have to tell you, which I, I know that you're aware, but just you and your team sent me something from Boston Magazine. Super smart, I thought, really, you know, and uh, it's where you were featured and then put a nice little note on the inside of that. And you were like, we see you. And I love that you you targeted me as a woman and and, and similar with what you do, uh, a lot of what you do with your team and the people that you serve, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You just talk to people like people. Not- yeah not marketing, not, um, it's like, even, you know, it's funny though, even when you say marketing, like people think of it as this, like everyone's trying to sell someone. It's like, okay, maybe there's some people that are, but how about just, you're genuinely curious about people and meeting people and hearing what they're doing and making more connections. Like if that's marketing, like fine, but that's all I'm trying to do. Yeah. And, you know, I found that to be true too. I'm the type of person who will always kind of like, I'll take the coffee, whatever, you know what I mean? Yeah. He invites me. So being in, um, in real estate, I have a lot of mortgage lenders and things that reach out to me and, you know, I'm like, you know, I'll have the coffee, you know, and recently it was a, a young guy just getting started. And I, and now I watch him blossom and I, I'm like, way to go, dude. I've like introduced him to other agents and stuff. And I think, you know, it's, it's just, I feel like the right thing to do, right? You know, just, you never know who you're going to meet. You never know. Yep. Which brings me to the point too, of when you and I first, we had a virtual coffee, right? You and I just like this. <laughs> and I just thought you were just the coolest chick. <laughs> <laughs> Feelings mutual. I was like, I'm so happy we're meeting. This is great. Cause you never know. You like, <laughs> when you see people's photo, especially you have this like almost imaginary sense of what they sound like and what they're like, even how tall they are. Like, I have no idea how, it's so funny. One of my team members I met in COVID virtually, and that was our interview. And I imagined she was like six feet tall and she's maybe five, two. (laughs) It was so funny when we met, I'm like, you don't look anything like I thought. And she's like, what? I'm like, I mean, your height. I mean, your height. Yeah. Yeah. But like, it's so great when you meet people and get to experience them in real life. And in real life doesn't have to be like, I hug you, touch you, right. like, but live. Mm-hmm. And it's like, oh, you're like how I thought you were. And I also think that that's, I don't know, that's that's like even with, um, it's funny when we were doing the Boston Magazine thing, we were trying to do something kind of more serious because we we're like very not, okay, we're serious, but not stuffy. But we're like, how do you emote that in a photo? And we're like, let's try to do like serious face. And we end up just looking like bitches. We tried (laughs) to do, wait, so we tried to do a Vogue S shoot with like gowns Uh and it came off like total Kardashian (laughs) (laughs) change. It was just wrong. (laughs) And we're like, no, if someone sees that and they don't know us, like we don't come off as like, um warm and loving like we look serious but you lose the warmth thing so (laughs) when you meet when you get to chat with people in real life or experience their voices and their expressions you're like oh I get a more a more clear sense of who the heck this person is so when you and I connected I was like oh like this chick thought I would yeah Yeah. she's cool Yeah. yeah and to your point what you said about you know marketing versus you know just getting to know people I felt like that's what we did and, yeah, you know, although like we are, our businesses are kind of like, you know, they're adjacent to one another and that kind of thing. And that we could certainly, um, you know, gain things from, you know, having each other in our lives and in our businesses. It wasn't about that at all. And that, yeah. is, the, that is really the crux of like what it's all about. Right. And I felt that you and I talked about everything but business. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It, like a true getting to know you, but I think, I think it takes a lot of us a while to understand and almost just like, maybe it's not even understanding, but it's like, quit trying to get results every time you do something. Wow. That's so true. And like, 
once you start doing that, like awesome shit starts randomly happening, but it's not random. You just create the space for it to happen because you're not trying to force something down some lane. Mm -hmm. So it ends up being way more open because you're open to any possibility instead of, I need to get this person here and we need to get to this conversation. It's just like, meh. (laughs) <laughs> you have so many good things to say. I've listened to you on on another podcast too and just kind of doing some research for our discussion. And um, she's got so many good nuggets. You're you're such a good leader. And I feel like you you could be a good podcaster too. Maybe. Maybe it's in the future. It's one yeah. of those things I maybe talk about. I still have a podcast box, like start your own podcast thing that my husband gave me last Christmas. I haven't yeah. heard it yet. I haven't opened it yet, but I'm like, maybe before this Christmas, we'll open it. <laughs> yeah, I think that's probably what I bought when I got started here is literally called Podcast in a Box. <laughs> yeah, something like, something like that. Got a couple of microphones, a mixer, headphones, you yeah. know. <laughs> but it's, you know, now like almost 20 years in the business and people want to know like, what's the secret or what's the, it's like, there aren't secrets. Like you have to just like, it's like a rate and volume thing and like, then it's again, sometimes you get lucky along the way, but a lot of it's just being genuinely curious and open to possibilities and just paying attention to like what's happening or like paying attention to like, oh, what do we have in common? Or like someone says something and you're like, oh my God, that's so interesting. Will you tell me more about that? Yeah. But you're not trying to like force something. And that doesn't come naturally for a lot of people. I guess. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> But you've been super successful. You're talking about 20 years in the business now. This was not the direction that you were headed initially, right? No, I was a bio pre-med in school. (laughs) (laughs) Now in financial services, I was a bio pre-med. Then I ended up in like econ, math. I was a math and science nerd, but I love people. And I landed in psychology because I just love people. And my my, my, um, minor was italian and my parents were like oh fucking great you're gonna be an italian therapist like this is worth it and i'm just like whatever it's stupid. <laughs> um and then i randomly ended up in financial services and it was more just a um interview because i was like i gotta get a job and let me just throw a bunch of stuff on the wall see what sticks and i ran into a friend of a friend at the interview and he this guy that was an advisor and he was like you got to try to do this. I'm like, well, what if I don't like it? He's like, you'll be 23 and you'll do something else. Like who cares? But if you like it, your whole life will change. Like give it a whirl. And I was like, that's reason enough to give it a try. Mm -hmm. But then once you try something, I had amazing leaders that I was just dumb or smart enough to listen to. Many others (laughs) did not. Most people fail out of our industry, not because they're too dumb. They're just not willing to do the deal. Um, And I just did what he told me to do. (laughs) Yeah. Very you know, there was no right? like, you're going to kill this guy and then you're going <laughs> to, um, but it's just work that's uncomfortable and it's awkward. And it's when you're like a superstar student, again, I was a bio pre-med at Georgetown. Like I'm no dummy, right? but like, it really sucks to be in positions that you're like, I suck at this and I'm so uncomfortable. Like I'm used to being the best in that straight A and it's like, I almost failed out of the business before I even started, you know? but I was stubborn enough to continue. (laughs) Yeah. So when you first got started, you probably faced some challenges, but when you say you almost failed out of the business before you got started, like what, what was it that kept you going? Um, honestly, just cause I, I won't let myself fail at something. I'm like, I might suck at it, but it's kind of like, even when I talk with my kids about it, it's like, you know, you're not good at it yet. And even if you're one of my, my still life mentor, former bosses would say like, you can't decide if you like something or not until you know how to do it, or you're remotely like, Mm -hmm. capable. I don't even know if I'd say good at it, but it's almost like riding a bike. Like I think of my kids that are like, I hate this and I hate bikes and it suck and blah, blah, blah. And I'm just like, you just can't do it yet. But like, once you can do it, it's like, oh my God, I can't remember not doing it. Right. Like, like before you have kids, you can't imagine what it's like having kids. Then you have kids and you're like, I, I blacked out everything before. <laughs> I didn't even, but there's no, there's no playbook. I think that having kids is the perfect analogy 
and, and yes, Kim, I make up all the shit as we talk about this. A lot of the nuggets that come out, I just make it up. And I'm like, oh yeah, I like Amazing. that. And I say it and I'm like, yeah, that. But like you have kids, there's no playbook. It's so hard. So the best thing you do is you find a community of people that are doing the hard at the same time you are. So you don't feel alone. You also find the people that don't suck at it that are willing to share their ideas and their insights. So for me, that was like my sister-in-laws. I, my husband's one of seven. There's 25 grandkids just on his parents' side. Oh my God. His parents are 70 and 72 with 25 grandkids. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah, Irish Catholic family, Irish Catholic family. And, um, Can't imagine and, the holidays with oh all my, It's so fun. But to this day, I'm like, can we please wear name tags? There's just too many of you. Um, and... But like, yeah, like they, you know, before I even had my first and my sister-in-laws are like, listen, like, I know you want to breastfeed, but if you can't, like you give the kid a bottle and it's fine. And we were all bottle fed and we're fine. Right. Right. <laughs> and it's just like, okay. Okay. And it's like, you can have your intention and your, but like, there's just certain things to be stubborn about and other things it's like, get over it. Like done is better than perfect or done is better than your ideal vision. And frankly, what you think you want is probably not, maybe not probably, but often not what you actually want. So you have mm. to be like open to the universe, like sending you what you actually need and want. And you know what I mean? Absolutely. Do you think you've always had this mindset or is it something that's developed over time? I, I think I've always been like this, but I'm more aware that I'm like this yeah. now. Um, I think that that's one of my unique abilities for yeah. sure is like, and like, you know, even in our company, like my title internally, I can't externally use it because financial services doesn't take to the title visionary as a okay. proper title, <laughs> but as an entrepreneurial company, like I can see things mm -hmm. not like a psychic. <laughs> right. Right. But you have vision, like you said, I have vision. Yeah. yeah. And, and like, and it's also just having trust, but that's a muscle that you build. It's almost it like a confidence thing. Like you, you, but you can build confidence in the same way you can build muscles in your body. Mm -hmm. It requires practice. Yeah. It's, some people are more inclined, are more apt to have better musculature, but like at, there's ways that you can improve, but for others, it takes more effort. You just have to decide if you want it enough and know what you have to do. Yeah. You know? I like the idea of, you know, surrounding yourself with a network of people who are going to be collaborative and, um, you know, for you, as you mentioned, you have people who are, they hold you accountable, maybe, you know, or, or you have coaches, um, people like that, that you always keep in your life. And I love when I see people that are super successful, who also still have coaches, coaches who have coaches, which I think oh is- my God. If Tiger Woods has a coach, like yeah. why am I not having a coach? Like that's ridiculous. Um, I think that's where great book, um, No Ego, Cy Wick Wakeman, Wickman, whatever. Um, <laughs> but I think a lot of us, as we get more successful and like have success in our careers or our personal, professional lives, whatever, start to think like sometimes you get into a space of I know it all. And I think you get better when you start to identify simultaneously acknowledging the stuff that you're awesome at and giving yourself not just credit, but like that builds confidence. Knowing what you're awesome at helps you build confidence. But then I think what almost checks your ego is when you acknowledge what you're not good at. Yes. And, but it's, it's like, then it's like, what are the things that I'm not good at that I'm better off building a team or having another who on Dan Sullivan is one of my coaches more indirectly now I'm part of his program strategic coach but when I started he was the direct coach which I feel so grateful that I was I had that experience and he talks about who not how so it's like instead of trying to figure out how do I so when you find yourself going how do I consider is it a better avenue to have someone uh, who though could be not even a person it could be like Instacart is one of my who's Uber <laughs> is a who yes like you know so it's like how do I get home when I'm totally shit face? <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> call an Uber. I don't, I mean, I'm not even doing that. I don't even drink anymore, but like there's great solutions for stuff now. I, yeah. I hate grocery shopping or I, I don't want to find the time for it. Or well, actually when I go to the grocery store, I end up buying way more shit that I don't need. Mm -hmm. And 
it, so ooh, Instacart keeps me, it's actually, it's more expensive, but it's not, it's cheaper because I don't buy all the random crap. So you just, just get in there, pick out what you need and you're done. Yeah. yeah. So it's my who, but then there's other like things that it's like, how do I, so right now, one of my girlfriends is um, a, a health and wellness coach, a couple of girlfriends. I'm actually separately for different unique skills that they have. I'm hiring them to help me with just getting better habits with food and nutrition. Nice. I have every freaking cookbook. I know it. I studied it, but I can't execute. It's just a block <laughs> for me. So I'm like, I'm going to hire someone to help me just break it down. Like, I'm like, treat me like a kid, treat me like your kid. And let's start over. Like, how would you teach your kid about this? Cause I just mentally need to, you know, my foundation isn't good. Even though my knowledge is good, I'm not executing it. So I mm -hmm. hire someone yeah. instead of, cause I've been witnessing, honestly, I've been collecting the cookbooks, collecting the Pinterest recipes, but I'm not executing. <laughs> so I'm like, yeah. How so, many videos and pictures do I have yeah. in my phone of like, oh, that looks oh, really good. I'm going to try that. Hundreds. Hundreds. <laughs> hundreds. And they're even organized by appetizer and main meal and healthy meal and smoothies. And, but no, I don't do any of them, but I have a great collection. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like, it's a, it's just a great, like, um, um, even with yourself, curiosity of just pick one thing at a time. And, and that's like one of the best things I've done for myself that I've, I had to teach myself to do was to have a big list. Cause as a visionary, I have constant ideas mm -hmm, <laughs> mm -hmm. and you can't, or you shouldn't try to execute on all of them at once. Even with the best of intention, nobody can do that. And frankly, even if you could, I don't think you'll enjoy it as much. But if you can get from zero to 20, 40, 60, 100 and do that one thing at a time, you get to witness way more high fives more frequently yeah. than if you do like 10% of 10 things at a time and you feel like you're making no progress. You're not actually getting there. You feel like a loser. Um, so I speed up by slowing down. I'm never slow, mm -hmm. but I slow my roll of like how many things at a time I'm trying to get to a hundred at. And that's where I find I'm able to get way more done. And the things that I want to keep moving on that, that I, when I know like, oh, I have 10 goals. Well, Carolyn, you can't be personally trying to do 10 huge things at once. Well, what are the things I can get another person or thing to move along? And that can be their thing that I trust. And frankly, I may not enjoy it as much anyway, so right. I should be giving it to them anyway. Yeah. And once you do it, you're like, why did I hold on to that thing for so long? Right. So kind of know your strengths and then know yes. where you can delegate. Yeah. But it's delegating like De Dan Sullivan says, it's Della upping. Like, where huh? do I, yes. Yes. where do I give it to someone that's going to do it better anyway? Yes. Or like, maybe it's not better, but maybe it's like a thing that I'm okay at, but I can do an awesome job because I'm really good at this thing, but I don't love doing it. How do I give it to someone that maybe it's not even their, their best thing, but they're psyched to take it on. <laughs> so it gets done. And frankly, you often give it to them. And if you don't tell them how to do it, but you tell them what you want done, mm -hmm. they end up doing it in a way way better than what you would have even imagined because you were trying to do 10 things. So you were like, I can't even be creative. I have to just execute. They have the space to be creative and play right. with different ways to approach it. Yeah. You can come up with something better anyway. So as a leader, you have to be able to do those types of things, right? Because you can't take everything on. How, how is it for you? Or is it always easy for you to be able to, to you know, what it was the term? Della up. <laughs> Della up. Yes. No. <laughs> it's not did you want to have control of everything <laughs> it's not easy um and it also I find like as you get into it you sometimes like it requires like real open honest conversations with the people you're working with as well because when you're moving really fast if the person's not at that speed or they're not understanding context or they're they can misunderstand it as like it could, it could be easily, so a couple things. It can one be easily misunderstood as like, I'm giving you this shit task. And it's like, no, this is a wicked important task. <laughs> and I'm giving it to you, this is like a gift. And it's like the sacred thing I'm giving you. Even if it's like something so insignificant, but it's super important. Um, It also can be like, 
you can end up moving too fast with the things because you realize the person is so capable, but you're like, you're, you're giving them too much at once instead of like giving them context of like this I need right now versus this is like someday. So put it on your someday list, but I want it on your list, not mine. Mm -hmm. Um, and it, it starts with just, but really it starts with understanding yourself. And I think the biggest thing that people don't invest in is understanding themselves and understanding it's not a selfish activity. Right. Um, but it's not just for the sake of helping yourself. Like once you understand, like understanding yourself kind of like put on your own safety mask mm -hmm. first or oxygen mask is how you end up helping others. But then it's like toggling between like, I'm going to, I'm creating this space so I can, so it's, it's equally important. And this is also a Dan Sullivan exercise that we've done of under, of even understanding for yourself. It's almost hard to give stuff up if you don't, for me, if I don't know what I'm going to do with that freed up space, it's hard to give stuff up. Uh -huh. Whereas if I go through the exercise of like, oh my God, if I give this up, that means I can, I have more space to do more of or this other thing that I didn't have space to do or I can just sleep and eat and make some of these Pinterest yeah videos. learn how to cook <laughs> so it's like figuring out that balance but I think most of us we try to get from zero to a hundred and that's just like a stupid expectation but it's like almost like how we're wired to immediately approach things and then we quit kind of like when someone's approaching a new health and wellness routine they often go from whatever they were doing before to like giving up everything and trying to work out an hour and a half a day and mm -hmm. perfect sleep routine. And it's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Like, why don't you pick one thing first and a hundred percent commit to that one thing and then pick your next thing and a hundred percent commit and then mm -hmm. pick your next thing. So I started that personal journey, like really seriously, only three years ago. And my first thing that I started unapologetically doing was just my water habit. Yeah. I was like, Cheers. if I don't, at a foundation. Yeah. Cheers. 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 And tea, water, okay. tea, water, tea. And, um, cause like, I was like, well, Carolyn, because uh, acknowledging like, <laughs> you're not drinking any water. I was literally just drinking coffee all day. And then I switched to wine at night and I was like, well, yeah, I'm getting liquids, but I'm not getting any water. And like, just reading and, and it like hit me like a two by four, not like it was the first time I heard it, but I was finally open to hearing it and was like, you know, one of the foundation things that you need is water. And I'm like, yeah. oh shit. Okay. So that was my first thing. And I have all these other big audacious goals, but I, I think that you also like, you can slow down when you realize you have the rest of your life. That doesn't mean wait till the rest of your life, but slow down when you think you need to get to certain places mm -hmm. and like acknowledge like what's like a realistic time frame and what are other things that foundation have to happen first and if you're a person that comes up with excuses and stuff partner informally or formally with the person that will push you that's me and my business partner oh great I'm like let's run a marathon and she's like why don't we do a 5k first Carolyn and I'm like <laughs> probably a good idea Jen <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And Jen is more inclined to be like, no, let's do these smaller things. Perfect. And I'm like, why don't we do something a little bigger? And it's not perfect, but it's 85%. And she's like, okay. Mm -hmm. So between the two of us, it has been this like, awesome. And we are so different by the way. Yeah. We, we have become friends in the process of doing business together, but it wasn't even our plan to do business together. Again, my intention, my intention wasn't I'm going to make this girl my business partner. <laughs> my initial intention was I have all this office space. You live around the corner. Do you want to share space? And then it was like, oh, it would be so much easier if we did a lot of stuff the same way because then we could share in some staff stuff. And then it was like, it, again, it organically happened, but we mm -hmm. were just openly, honestly having conversation. And then it's like, as you do that, we're like, shit, we are so different, but like, we want the same thing. Yeah. We do, but we don't like, I love chaos. Jen is like Buddha <laughs> Zen loves peace and simplicity. <laughs> but like our vision of what the team looked like was the same. Mm -hmm. But what we do to how that thing are very <clears throat> different. We're different who's in the thing that make it happen. So I think that forget business. It's like just in your life. It's like understanding like 
you're just so much better when you have like groups of people that are like you, but also aren't like you mm-hmm. and challenge your thinking. Like you don't have to be friends with people that vote the same way. You don't have to have friends that are all the same age or have kids or don't have kids. Like we're all just so much more interesting when we're surrounded by different people, but at our core value, like similar things, or at least value each other's values and respect and honor each other, you know? Yeah. I love how the two of you have connected. And like you were saying, you're not that much. There are some things, some core values that are the same there, but you're a lot different in terms of your personality style and things like that. But somehow you've, you've made it work and you've, you've been drawn to one another. How long have you been together? So we, um, informally, we started being roommates in 2016. Get out. (laughs) And, and sorry, in business. Um, and in the office, but yep. then we formally merged the team together in 2018. Now she and I had known each other from being in another office, not in practice yeah. together, but just knew like, Hey, Hey, like knew each other, knew each other were nice, but I had an impression of her and she had one of me that were very different than what was actually real. But once we like, but we were both open and curious about each other and knew at the core, everyone, you were good people. Mm-hmm. So then just, we started to articulate more specifically, like, what are the things, even if our personal values are different, but we honor each other's things and know what they are, what are the things that everyone in our group must subscribe to and aspire to be awesome at, even if they're not there all the time? And that, and and now I like, I almost find now once I defined that, it's like one of those things, once you see it, you can't unsee it. Right. Once I defined it, I find every experience in my life not just professional, but like I had a terrible experience with a builder. Thank goodness he had excellent subs. I'm not going to use his name because I'm not going to defame the guy, but anyone that knows me, you don't hire that builder. And I told <laughs> you that. I had to kick him off the job. It was awful. And what I realized was when I look at the values that Jen and I talk about in our team, so it's high standards, not to be per- confused with being perfectionist, having open, honest conversations which means you're open to hearing, but you're open to, you're going to say honestly what you think. But golden rule is the third one. You find the right time and space to deliver, especially tough messages. And you also like, you know, golden rule is also, you know, you, especially like when someone's down, it's like, what would I want someone to do for me if I was down? What am I going to then do for them? So it's like, not just in one or one extreme or the other, it's the subtleties that I find really make it hard that people don't get sometimes. Um, being adaptable, flexible, and lastly, working as a team. So it makes sense in our business. We talk about this builder experience because what, again, once you see it, you can't unsee it. <laughs> there, there was, a, there was a high standard there of the subs. The people that were here were flipping excellent. The details are incredible. Um, there was no open, honest conversation. The guy didn't even want to have meetings. There was things that were swept under the rug that I now am very clear about. Um, There was no golden rule. Mm -hmm. There was, so like, I I think my point is, I wasn't thinking like that, but once we as a team were getting deeper on that, which was simultaneously, like when I was working with this guy, um, because 2020 is when we defined our, our, our values. And it's also when I started my project and it was awful. But once I took, cause I take everything through that value filter now, I love it. I was like, Oh, he didn't meet the bar of my values that I hold everyone to. Meaning if you don't meet those values for me, I just can't play with you. Yeah. So Jen and I personally have different values. Like one of hers is about, I can't remember the word she uses. It's like environment and like recycling and shit. Like, okay. <laughs> like I get it. It's not in my top five. It's not in my top 10, but I get it. It's important, but it's not the most important thing to me. Mm-hmm. But it's super important to her. So I'm going to make sure to honor it for her. But the the five I just listed are not negotiable for me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like, I love that you have those and that you, you kind of developed those and they've been there all along, but you actually took pen to paper, it sounds like. And yeah. And you test them. them like crazy. And yeah. it's like, it's it's just so great because once you know it, you can never you never negotiate against it. You, you at your core, just understand. And that's like where the per, the personal exercise, actually a great share that it's a, a free link on the site is think 
the number two perform. There are other coaches that I love. I met them in for financial services stuff, but they do business executive, actually uh, professional athlete coaching, but they have a values card exercise you can do on their website and you filter through because you're going to all of a sudden go through these 60 cards and you're like, well, all these things are important. It's like, yes, but you have to choose five. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what are your most important? And so what I actually find is interesting is many people end up saying health is one of their most important things. But when you start to say, what's my ideal self and what am I actually doing? Most of us don't value our health in real life, even though we say we do. Mm hmm. Or we think we do. Yeah. So it's just like an incredibly impactful part of your life experience to just know your things. And once you see it, you can't unsee it and have an exercise by which or a culture. So in our team, we have a thread that we're constantly acknowledging when people are living in the value. We're giving them cred for like, here's an example of that. And it's just like making people feel seen. Mm -hmm. We don't, we don't do the opposite because it's not golden rule. You have a yep. conversation privately with someone when they're not yeah. honoring it. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, but like, I think for people individually, it's really hard to find um, like, so health is one of mine. And when you know it, but you're not sharing, just like when you have a goal, but if you don't share it with someone else. Yep it's way less likely going to happen. Yeah. So, so it's like, have a goal, have it written, have a plan, share it with someone, have accountability. But most of us don't even have the first step done. So no shit, you don't get anything you want. You barely <laughs> even know what you want. <laughs> it's so true. I literally saw Oprah say that same thing. Welcome to my TED talk. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. She was doing an interview where it's someone had asked her, you know, how it is and what, you know, that she has um, met so many successful people and what do they have in common? And one of the things is knowing where you want to go. Yeah. Here we are at the end of a year where people start to reflect, they start to look towards the next year and set maybe those goals and things like that. So it's such a good thing. Like, yeah, you got to write it down. Journaling is such a big thing, right? I don't yes. Do that. Actually, and that's um my favorite, favorite, favorite. I don't have the link, but remind me after and I'll send it so you can share it with yeah. your, your listeners too, is there's this Ben Hardy who I, actually, it's funny, again, kind of university things, but I was following this guy, Ben Hardy. He's a psychologist, like thinker person too. Not like he works with individual clients, therapists, but um, that's like his background. But he, I was following him on Medium. Um, a subscription service I do. And then I meet him at Strategic Coach, the coaching group that I do. And wow. he collaborates with Ben, uh, with uh, Dan Sullivan, my coach mm -hmm. and strategic coach, and they're collaborating on these books. And I'm like, this is flipping great because I've been already following this guy and thinking. But he has an excellent article and another YouTube video about like your process of journaling. So in a nutshell, it's um, every nine, every month, he journals every day. But uh -huh. if you at least monthly, and that's where, again, I started seeing incredible impact and personal choices that were way better. So um, for me, like an example, when I was reflecting, so he has, I'm, I'm probably going to mess it up, but in a nutshell, it's like, reflect on first your wins. What were your wins in the last 90 days? Or, and even if you're doing it monthly, it's like a rolling thing and you almost get to restate things. So you remind yourself because you forget things mm -hmm. you had for breakfast, never mind 90 days. <laughs> um, then it's like, what do you want to do the next 90? What do you want in the next year? What do you want in the next three or whatever it is? And it was for me in COVID. And I remember I was journaling on a beach and, um, and it was the winter and I was writing like, where do I want to be a year from now? And I was like, oh, you know what? I want to be at my peak of health and I'm writing this. And then I'm take a pause and I'm like, dude, you're drinking your face off every day. <laughs> you're working out, but you're not treating your body. well." And that's when I started thinking and I stopped drinking. My point is not to get people sober. Yeah. My point is there's different points that not you learn new things or hear something for the first time but that you are actually actually receptive to hearing it and doing something about it. So the more active you are with certain habits like journaling, you're more inclined to make better choices more frequently because you're listening to yourself more often. Mm -hmm. 
So you can listen to other people all day and listen to podcasts, but if you're not then listening within to your own voice in some active way, forget change. Yeah. Thank you so much for your time today. You, you're, <laughs> you're a little guru. <laughs> I love this stuff. I yeah. love this stuff. And again, the, the act of just hearing yourself say it, I say often when I do podcasts, I say something and I'm like, I just made that up. That was good. I like well, that. I got to write that down. <laughs> <laughs> um, Amazing. So and thank you for having me. And, and I'm so happy we met. I mean, me too. We were, you and I were fast friends. I was like, oh, I like you. Yeah. Mm. Next up, literally in real life. Okay. In real life. I assume we're going to do something. And I know that you and I have talked a little bit about doing some sort of a panel of like amazing women, yes. which you can't just help me create. You literally need to be on. Okay. I'm in. I'm <laughs> in. Great. No, we get, we get awesome women together and magical stuff happens. So it sure we'll does. Just, we'll just do it. Yeah. I'm Have in. an amazing day. My ticker is running you. down here, so I'm almost out of time, but I'm going to get this together and I want to just swing back around with you on what I can put on, you know, when I promote it. Um, yeah, any whatever, anything. Yeah, yeah. you're amazing. <laughs> oh, this was so, so fun. fun. Yeah, really fun. Thank and you. This gives, this stuff brings me energy, so this is a gift. So thank you. Yeah, I will chat with you later. I'll get with you. This is going to be on next week, so I want to make sure I have Ooh. like a headshot or whatever it is you want to use if you want your, you know, your serious one or if you want your no, <laughs> no, just the silly I one. I love the silly. I love the silly stuff. You know what? You could even use the one that has the multiple personalities. It was on our Facebook. Did you oh see that God. one? No, I'm going to look at it. If you go on the Nolan Group um, Facebook page, it was on my birthday post. It was November 27th. And it's oh, one that has multiple yeah. pictures. And it's just funny. So I, that would be kind of fun. Cool. Wait, I'm December 2nd. So we're both oh, Sagittarius. Yes. <laughs> yeah, that makes way more sense. There yep, it does. <laughs> All right. Have a great day. This thing's going to time out, but um, I'm going to look for that and I'll touch base with